Good evening. Happy Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. I think it still is. Uh, we are, nope, we're good. The lovely Stephanie Pepper. I'm so excited. I'm so happy to have you back. It's good to be back. Trip was good though. Trip was great. I'm exhausted and tired, but I'm ready to hit the ground running with this again. Perfect. It makes me happy. Yeah. So tonight, uh, it's also Registered Dietitian Day. It is. Happy yes. day to you. Thank you. Uh, I the the outpouring of support on Facebook and Instagram today has just been phenomenal. And I want to say to all my fellow dietitians. You're amazing. I love you. I love what you do. Keep up the good work and let's continue to support each other. Yes. I love what you do too. Thank you. Well, I can't wait for speech therapy day. We'll, we'll have to do we something have a fun. Month. I'm sorry. Well, it's National Nutrition this. Month, so technically. Oh. See, I don't get a, a like a specific day. We just get the whole month. I think we need to change that. Okay. We'll we, pick a day. We need to give you a day. It's in May. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. We have a new plan. I like new plans. There you go. So for Registered Dietitian Day, we're going to expand on our discussion of carbohydrates that we had mm -hmm. weeks and weeks ago and talk specifically about fiber because fiber is a carbohydrate. Surprise. So anytime you're looking at a label and it says total carbohydrate on it, it says dietary fiber underneath and one of the things that we tell people especially when we're counseling people with high blood sugar is that we want them to look at the total carbohydrate don't look at the sugar but if you take the number of grams of fiber and subtract it from total carbohydrate technically it means you're having a net carbohydrate because fiber is really really good and you need it so tonight we're gonna make two high fiber dishes. The first one is minestrone soup, which is like, thank you, Helen. Appreciate you. Um, Aww, love I love her. It. We love you. <laughs> um, so minestrone soup, super high in fiber because it's rich in lots and lots of veggies. It's like the, the veggie kitchen sink soup Yes. Because we're just going to take any veggies we have and we're going to put them in our soup. Now we're going to do this with a little bit of uh, strategy so that we know that it's going to taste good. Agreed. The second thing we're going to make is chia seed pudding, which scares some people. So we're going to talk about that too. So let's get started on our soup. I haven't even turned on the stove yet. All right, you need oil? We need some oil, yep. So we're gonna start our soup like I start every soup with onion, celery, and carrot. This is called mirepoix. Uh, Stephanie is from Louisiana, and in Louisiana, they have a different grouping of veggies that they use, and it's called the Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. So with the Holy Trinity, we take out carrots and we add in green peppers, which I also absolutely mm -hmm. love. So you can't go wrong either way. Nope. Um, so onion, carrot, celery, we have some garlic, we have some zucchini and yellow squash. We may not use all of this because that yellow squash was massive. It was a big one. Um, so we may not put all of this in there and that's okay. We can use it for something else. We also have some great northern beans. I have a can of mixed veggies that I don't know what I was going to do with. This is the perfect thing to do with it. Yeah. If you have broccoli, you can throw broccoli in there. If you have bell peppers, you can throw bell peppers. You, you can literally green beans, just whatever you have. Whatever you have is good. So a lot of people put tomatoes also. We're going to use a little bit of tomato paste, but we're not going to add tomatoes to ours today. Maybe next time, not today. So all of these foods are high in fiber. We also have vegetable stock here that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna put this back here. Oh, the only thing I didn't include that is not high fiber is our traditional, well, it's got two grams in it. Our traditional pasta. So 
There are some new types of pasta out there that are higher in fiber. You could use um, chickpea pasta. You could use lentil pasta. All of those are much, much higher in fiber than the regular. This has a little bit. I think Stephanie has some, so she's going through the cupboard right now to look and see what we have. We also have a potato that if we need a little more filler in there, I can throw a potato in there too. You have lentil pasta and it's red. How beautiful is that? So do I'm- Do you wanna use it? I kinda do wanna use it. We should. I, okay, we're gonna use lentil pasta instead. I'm really excited about this. Um, so the difference in two ounces of lentil pasta versus traditional is that lentil pasta has six grams of fiber and this only has two. So this is three times more nutrient dense with fiber than this is. That's pretty cool. I'm glad you have this. How cool. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, we're gonna take all our, our celery carrots. I do have garlic too because I can't live without garlic. Um, get garlic up today. You ready? It's good for your blood pressure. It's good for, do you have the onions? Or, oh no, I have them here on my cutting board. Yep, we're ready. Yeah, it's time because it's All right, start to smoke. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. So why do we need, well, let me start first with how much fiber do you need in your diet? Do you know how much fiber you need to eat a day? This is a tough question. No. It changes depending on whether you're a man or a woman. If you're a man, you need 38 grams of fiber a day. What? That's a lot. As a woman, you need 25 grams of fiber a day. So that's a pretty significant difference. So we get fiber from vegetables. We get fiber from fruits, yes, even canned fruits. These pears have three grams of fiber for two thirds of a cup while the peaches only have one gram of fiber. So some fruits and vegetables are higher than others. Bananas, high in fiber. So you can get fiber from whole grains, you can get fiber from legumes, lentils are a legume, I mean, you can get fiber in a lot of things. Meat does not have fiber, so you're not gonna get fiber from meat. Um, potatoes, the skin has fiber. The flesh inside does not, so we do recommend eating the skin of the potato, unless you have uh, kidney disease, and then stay away from it. That's another episode. Um, so we, we want you to be eating fruits and vegetables and whole grains because they're higher in this really important nutrient. Why do you think that people with dysphagia may have more trouble getting enough fiber? Yes, so this is a fabulous question. So with fruit, the type of fiber in fruit is called soluble fiber. So it absorbs water. The type of fiber in, say, legumes and kale and broccoli and green beans and corn is insoluble fiber. It does not absorb water. And then of course, those two categories can be broken down even farther. We're not even gonna go there today. Um, and I'm doing this off the top of my head. I did not take notes or I'm not reading notes with me today because I really wanted to focus on more on the food and, mm -hmm. and what we were doing here. Mm -hmm. So. People with dysphagia have a little more trouble with fiber because it's bulky. Mm -hmm. It takes up space. And A, if you have a stricture in your esophagus or your esophagus is not working so that motility is gone, it's really hard to push that bulk down. Mm -hmm. So we recommend for a lot of people that don't get enough fiber in their diet to take a fiber supplement. Well, the problem with that is that some of these fiber supplements and I have here a, um, this is similar to Metamucil. So Metamucil has flavoring in it because this stuff tastes terrible. We usually tell you to mix it with juice because it's not, it's not great. But this has four and a half grams of fiber for one tablespoon. This 
gels, which means it gets thicker and it thickens. So if you have trouble swallowing and that thickens while it's in your throat, that can cause some pretty severe problems as you, I'm yeah. sure, have seen. Yeah. So there is, there are a number of types of fiber that don't thicken. I do have one here and I like this one. If I don't get enough fruits and vegetables in my diet, this is just a fiber drink and it has um, five grams of fiber in it also for one scoop. And one scoop is probably about the size of a tablespoon. It's prob probably very similar. Um, so this I just mix in water. Um, I use one of those little hand uh, milk frothers yeah. because it clumps if you don't do that, which drives me crazy. And then you're not going to drink it anyway. Right. Um, this stuff is easy to drink. Benefiber, which is made from wheat dextrin, is also a thin version and I recommend that one to anyone who doesn't have trouble with wheat sensitivity or allergies because it it bulks once it gets to your stomach it doesn't bulk in the glass while you're drinking it so it's a lot safer for people to use so one of the things that I find too when I'm working with people with dysphagia is that they use a lot of liquid to help move things to mm -hmm. help clear mm -hmm. Um, the the passage, so to speak. Yep. So they're filling their stomach with water or juice or something that doesn't have a lot of fiber, and they fill up quickly. Yeah. yeah. So that's one of the things I feel like gets in the way. You have to drink enough to get things down, and you're just not drinking the right things. Well, that and fiber. I say the right thing. Well, um, what are the biggest signs that you aren't getting enough fiber in your diet? We're going to get to that in just a minute, Helen. So, so first of all, once you get it from your mouth, down your esophagus, and into your stomach, fiber is slower to digest, okay? So fiber takes longer for your body to process. So we, we recommend foods that are high in fiber because A, they're nutrient dense and not calorie dense. So all of these things that we're making, using here today, super high in vitamins, minerals, good calories, low in calories. So there's not a ton of calories in this, but there's a lot of fiber. So I think one serving of what we're making today has 10 grams of fiber, which for a woman is more than 30% of what you need in a day, which is fabulous. Mm -hmm. So. Fiber takes a long time to digest, so you're going to feel fuller. So if you're drinking a ton of liquid to get things down and you have fiber, you may feel sick because that's a lot of stuff in there. Especially if you're not used to having a lot of stuff. And if you're not used to having a lot of stuff in there, this can be very, very uncomfortable. So And may present in a variety of ways. So maybe something that you would want to break into smaller pieces throughout the day instead of having a full high fiber diet. Correct. A fi high fiber meal, you could do just a little bit of high fiber. And this is a, a, day. a strategy that we recommend to anyone that's managing diabetes and blood sugar because high fiber is harder for your body to digest so it balances out your blood sugar. So your blood sugar does one of these and comes back down slowly instead of shooting up and then dropping down. Mm -hmm. So same concept, we're, we're addressing the same kind of thing here. Um, I'm gonna bring you this tomato paste too because I wanna get a little bit of that before you put too much of the, um, the, the liquid in. It needs a little bit of liquid. Yeah, it got a little, it got a little hot. hot. Okay, um, I'm gonna clean the tomato paste off my finger filter. Hold on. Okay, so, so it takes a while for fiber in your stomach to digest, right? Because your body digests fiber slowly. So we've talked about protein in the past where your stomach does the starting of digestion for fiber, for protein. So if you mix that fiber with that protein and you also have a little bit of fat in there, and as we know, fat slows digestion also, 
you could potentially feel really full. This um, this soup is is has a good amount of protein in it as well, because people forget that vegetables have protein also, right? We talked about this a couple weeks ago as well, how vegetables are incomplete proteins, so you have to group them together so that you get a complete protein. So I'm just gonna open the pasta so that it's ready by the time we get there. So if you're finding that you are eating a full meal or what most people would consider a full meal and you just feel sick, A, you ate too much and you need to slow down when you're eating so that your body can more efficiently tell you when you've had enough. Two, break your meals into smaller portions more often throughout the day. So instead of eating three big meals, maybe you eat five smaller ones. Maybe you eat six smaller ones. It's, it's really up to you and what your body is telling you. This does take trial and error. It's one of the things that Stephanie and I work with our clients on for what is a good time of day to eat? How often should I eat? Especially for those of them that have some other things like blood sugar that they're trying to manage. So the, the fiber now leaves your stomach and gets into your small intestine. Your small intestine is where you start absorbing the nutrients from the food, okay? So your pancreas releases some enzymes to process those, those um, vitamins, minerals, and calories. All those nutrients that your body needs to be healthy, it starts absorbing those and breaking those apart even more and pulling them into your bloodstream so that your bloodstream can deliver it to your cells. Now, you also have bacteria in your gut. And we are going to talk more about the gut-brain interaction in the future. But your gut bacteria is really a part of who you are. Everyone's gut flora is different. Everyone's flora is different. And it literally makes them who they are, which I think is so cool. You actually have more bacteria in and on your body than you have actual cells that make up your body which is a little bit terrifying and so fast. I'm a nerd, see, nerd. Well, what's funny is it. we we went, Kat and I went to a conference yesterday. Mm -hmm. On anxiety. On anxiety. And someone raised their hand and asked a question. And it's funny because Kat and I looked at each other <laughs> and our answer to each other almost simultaneously was gut brain. And then Stephanie goes, say it, say it. <laughs> And then someone else says, well, how does this deal with dysbiosis, which is bad, overgrown, bad bacteria in your system? And I was like, <laughs> and all I could think was, he's already behind it. I don't want to start a conversation. Because she's over here like, really long conversation. It, it probably would have been a really long conversation. Because as you know, once I get started, I, I don't stop easily. It, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was good. So your, your gut bacteria needs high fiber foods because these are also called prebiotics. So if you le read my, my supplement that I have here, it says prebiotic and fiber because the bacteria in your system eats certain things so that they can be healthy. And if your, your gut bacteria is healthy, you are healthy. It means your brain functions better. It means your immune system functions better. It means your mental health functions better. So we want you to have plenty of fiber, but what if you eat too much fiber? <clears throat> I had an instructor when I was going to nutrition school that had said, I think at one time, people ate up to 100 grams of fiber a day, and I was like, oh, that makes my stomach hurt just thinking about it. Because sometimes- but don't you get used to it? Like, doesn't your system get used to more? Yes. Like, you don't wanna just eat a bunch You'll, if you gradually increase. Nail on the head with the hammer, right there, yes. So, you're trying to incorporate fiber into your diet. You wanna do it slowly, because if you do it too much, if you, if you get too much fiber, uh, and once again, there are different kinds, right? The kind that absorbs water and the kind that doesn't absorb fiber. 
or water. <clears throat> Put those over there for you too. Mm -hmm. um, we also have these and should I put the pasta in? I think it's going to take a while for that pasta. Yeah, I, um, it says boil for seven minutes, so it will probably take closer to 10 or 15 yeah. since we don't have it boiling. Well, I, this is, yeah. Yep. Good. And then we'll add the, the squash a little later because these will soften pretty quickly. We are going to blend this and taste it to see how it tastes pureed. Yes. Um, okay, so too much fiber in your diet all of a sudden can be painful, uncomfortable, and cause gas and bloating. It also may cause constipation or diarrhea depending on the type of fiber that is in your system. And if anyone else has any other questions, please, I will do my best to answer them as well. So Helen, what are the biggest signs that you aren't getting enough fiber in your diet? Number one, you have a dysregulated GI tract. So yes, we're cooking, so I'm gonna apologize in advance. I talk about bowel movements more often than I should, but your bowel movements will tell you everything you need to know, right? So color, shape, size, texture, etc. Yes, it's, it's a lot of not super pleasant, but really, really important. So if you aren't getting enough fiber in your diet, you may be constipated. If you're getting too much fiber in your diet, you may be constipated. One of the signs I hear of all the time is that people have bowel movements that are just little pebbles. And that is a really, really good sign that you don't have enough soluble fiber in your diet because what soluble fiber does is it gels and it holds everything together. Um, so you need to add more fiber to your diet. Typically, I recommend fruits in that case. Also, you need to have plenty of water because if, you, if you're if you not drinking enough water and you're constipated but you have the right amount of fiber, it's probably because you're dehydrated and your gut needs water just as much as the rest of you. So um, I consult at a small hospital several days a week and one of the very first things that I tell my patients after surgery, because when you have anesthesia, not only do you go to sleep, but your gut goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. You need to drink plenty of water. Well, how much is this? I would say two to three liters a day. I know. Steph doesn't want to hear that because she's not, she's, she's not a two liter a day kind of a girl. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. If you are eating all the right things, and it's hard. Mm -hmm. Going from not drinking a lot to drinking a lot of water is very difficult. So water and fiber are really good friends. You need both. So your question about putting all that water in with the fiber, I personally think that that's a good thing, but yeah. it's going to expand. But maybe we need to spread it out, right? Right. And that's what I'm thinking is you're not going to get all the other stuff you need if you fill yourself up with water and fiber. Yeah. It's a, it's a fine line, and that's why I... Think you should work with a dietitian because you may not know right mm -hmm. you you may not know where to go next so man it's a tough one so the way you feel um, your bowel movements and um, just overall when when you are getting enough fiber um, your doctor will know as well because one of the things I haven't mentioned that is really, really important, one of the jobs of fiber is actually to lower your cholesterol. So fiber has this amazing capability where it'll grab cholesterol when it's going through your system and it'll get rid of it for you so that you don't have to process it because it'll just leave in your bowel movements. So. If your body is producing lots of cholesterol, this fiber will get rid of it for you. Because it's like a broom. And I didn't mention that, but um, literally, so fruit, soluble, right? It holds everything together. Things like uh, vegetables that are harder and they don't absorb water the same way, 
they are literally like a broom and they're literally brushing your intestines so they keep your gut in tip top shape. So people that have, I see a lot of diverticulosis in the elderly population, which is where, um, like if you take a balloon, like one of those, um, twisty balloons, mm -hmm. right. That's long and you like can pop out one side of it. That's basically what happens in your intestine if you don't have enough fiber in your diet. So you end up with these little pockets that come off the side of your intestine. So when you have diverticulitis, that means that that pocket got inflamed and is potentially infected. So we deal with that by literally cutting all the fiber out of your diet for anywhere from three days to a week. And then once you're healed and those symptoms have gone away, I do some counseling for this as well, which is very effective very quickly if you follow the instructions. Um, and it will calm down and the infection will clear. If it's bad enough, you may need antibiotics, but you can slowly start incorporating fiber into your diet again. And I usually tell people once your symptoms are gone, slowly start incorporating fiber until you get up to that 25 grams a day. You may need to start at five grams a day and work up like three or four grams at a time. Not much because you don't want to cause another flare and diverticulosis is painful um, or diverticulitis is painful. So it's manageable, but I know a lot of people that have it and they really, really suffer from it. So Getting enough fiber in your diet will help keep your intestine healthy, will help keep your heart healthy, and it will just help keep your gut. No, 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 you're fine. It will help keep your gut bacteria healthy, which overall helps your, your mood, your mental health, your immune system, etc. So, Helen, did that answer your question? Let me know if it did or didn't. Um, we're going to start on our chia pudding. Good idea. This is pretty simple. It's going to take probably 10 minutes. I should have started on it earlier, so I apologize. So we're going to start with our milk of choice. This is uh, vanilla oat milk. It took me a second to remember which one we were using. Okay, so I have a whisk. I have a bowl. I'm going to pour this into here. We're going to use a little bit of vanilla and maple syrup to sweeten this. Um, I also have, um, I also have some pineapple in the, you want to just dish me up some of that in here? Mm -hmm. I also have pineapple in here. Um, I was thinking I was going to puree some pineapple and potentially add it to this, but, or One tablespoon, pears. Two tablespoons. Well, let's, let's. I think that's sweet enough. Okay. Do you want to taste it? Sure. Oh, I'm shaky. You Ooh. are. <clears throat> you drinking enough water today? No, I did not. I'm only on. Good. I'm only on my first cup. It's a 40 ounce cup, but I'm only on my first one. I know. I also have not had enough water today. Okay, that's sweet enough for you. Yeah. Okay. We could add any fruit puree to this, so. I, yes, I agree. Yes. Okay, so I have the milk, sweetener, the vanilla. We're gonna now add our chia seeds. So I had one cup of the milk. I have four tablespoons of chia seeds. So um, I usually add chia seeds into yogurt and then add like blueberries or some kind of fruit in the morning. You can add um, you can make this and then you can always add fruit puree on top of it, oh. um, which is delicious. Um, so this is going to take, like I said, 10 or 15 minutes probably to gel. So I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit closer here. You see that? Okay. Um, okay. So why chia seeds? Well, chia seeds form a gel. They absorb liquid. They are, so 
this says three tablespoons is one serving, which seems like a lot for me because when I do yogurt, I use two tablespoons. So one tablespoon of chia seeds, I'm gonna get the tablespoon out so you can see how much that is. So one tablespoon of chia seeds is 50 calories, which is pretty high for seeds, yeah. So three tablespoons, we added four to this. Three tablespoons is 150 calories, nine grams of heart healthy fatty acids. So they're very high in omega-3 fatty acids, which a couple weeks ago we talked about how good they are for your brain and yep. your inflammatory system. Um, they have 13 grams of carbs for three tablespoons, which is not much, but they have 10 grams of fiber. So, our net amount of carbohydrate for three tablespoons is three grams. Because of all the fiber. Because of all the fiber. So there's also five grams of protein in three tablespoons, which is also See, I wasn't high. aware that there was so much protein in chia seeds. That's so much. <coughs> yes. So this is why people have called them a superfood in recent years because they're high in three really important nutrients. Yeah. So like I said, this is probably gonna take a few minutes. I should have started it earlier than I did. Um, but this is going to be great for your gut health. Now, if you're not used to this much fiber, I would start with like half a cup and one tablespoon of this. Um, so I also wanted us to talk about how you eat these if you have a swallowing disorder. Right. So, because that was your concern as well. It was. So I, my first concern mm -hmm. is that it's, well, I don't know if we can show it. It's seeds. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's little seeds. So yeah. lots of people have trouble with small, with granular pieces, pieces. Yep. So that concerned me. However, I do know that I've never been a super fan of chia seeds right. because they get kind of slimy. Yeah. But as I started processing your idea for us to do this, I thought, I wonder how that slimy is gonna help. So that's really funny. And this is a, uh, oh my gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Speech therapist, help me. Uh, you're different and I'm different. Your perception of it's slimy is not my perception. So yeah, I don't think they're slimy at all. And I may change my perception after this if I know we're gonna find out. Like if you can't feel because it's it's so gelled up, mm -hmm. it's it's like it absorbs and it get, becomes jelly yeah. ish around yeah. it. So in baking, a lot of vegan baking uses chia seeds as an egg replacement because it has that ability to absorb and hold things together. So you will see chia seeds as a substitute for eggs in a lot of recipes. How about that? They use flax seeds as well, but flax seeds don't gel quite the same way. So, I mean, it's, it's really up to you to try um, what you... I can't wait to try it. Yeah. And it's getting there, it's getting thicker. Yep. So what I usually do for my breakfast in the morning is I'll have my yogurt and I'll put in, I, I do two thirds of a cup of yogurt. I do two tablespoons of chia seeds and I, if I were smart, I'd do it the night before, but I don't always plan ahead for my breakfast. So I'll do it in the morning and then I'll take my frozen blueberries. Cause once again, I don't typically plan ahead for breakfast, even though I know that I should. And I eat this all the time. So you'd think I'd be better about it, but. I'll put my frozen blueberries in there and I'll put it in a in one of those like uh, Betty Crocker or Glad bowls that has the twist on lid and then I'll throw it in my bag and I'll let it sit for an hour so A, those blueberries can unthaw, yep, mm -hmm. and then, or thaw, not unthaw. <laughs> unfreeze. I'm having trouble with words today. I can help you with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, unfreeze or thaw. And then um, also it gives my chia seeds time to absorb all the extra liquid in my yogurt. And then I end up with a super, super thick yogurt. Now, if you can't handle super thick, you need to use 
less chia seeds or add a little bit of liquid. So this That's is really also good. why I like something like pears that has the syrup in it. Because if you make something like this and then you want to puree these, I just puree them and then add this on top and then those will help thin it out a little bit. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, like I said, trial and error with your chia seeds to figure out what texture is going to work best for you. So, yeah. And there are some people that a, a puree diet, this is going to work great for, and mm -hmm. there are some people it's not. For people who have hypersensitivity, this is not something you want to try right away. This is, if we're trialing foods, like Steph and I work with our clients on trialing new foods, mm -hmm. this is not a beginner level trial. Well, I think it true for many for many, for many people, people with dysphagia mm -hmm. but there are some people with dysphagia that that texture is not the issue right and this will go down fine yep um, just I, like scrambled eggs whole what for some our, people is fine right and for others they have to puree it right and it's so so this brings up a perfect segue into every single one of you are different mm -hmm. You cannot compare yourself to someone else because what you're feeling and experiencing and dealing with is not what your neighbor is going through. So it's really, really important for you to take advice from anyone else with a grain of salt because we know that you are an individual and your needs are not the needs of everyone else. And we specifically address needs with you. Individual needs, yes. It's important to... I mean, I think it's great that that you that people with dysphagia are supporting each oh, other. 100%. I love that. They need it. Mm -hmm. But what I can, what I need to stress is that please remember that one person's strategy may be detrimental to another person, and and be dangerous. Mm -hmm. So be careful of what you're recommending, and be careful of what you're you're taking in as a recommendation for what to try um, just do it slowly and easily mm -hmm. and um, talk to a professional you can call us mm -hmm. or talk to your speech therapist absolutely be careful yeah and you can ask your dietitian but we are not experts in swallowing we should be experts in the food piece and the pureed food piece mm -hmm. and the minced and moist piece but this is why Steph and I are partners because she has her expertise and I have mine and then when we come together and give you both of those together, super helpful. I think it is. I think so too. Um, so uh, I think I covered most of the topics that I wanted to cover. But I, I also wanted to touch on a concept that maybe people know about, maybe they don't. Um, I had mentioned before there are different kind of carbohydrates and different kinds of fiber. Fiber is all a little bit different depending on what plant it comes from, mm -hmm. right? So fiber comes from plants. So like with your whole grains, like you have brown rice and you have white rice. Brown rice has the fiber intact. White rice has had the fiber removed. So it's that outer layer that's harder. So if you're cooking brown rice, it takes 40 minutes. Whereas if you're cooking white rice, it takes 15 minutes, right? Because you have to cook through that outer layer and soften it to the point where you can actually start to digest it. Because if you're eating grains specifically and you're not cooking them, that's gonna cause digestive discomfort. Mm -hmm. So we want you to eat these things, but we want to make sure they're cooked properly before you eat them, because otherwise you're gonna end up with even more trouble. And with dysphagia, you probably can't swallow something that's that hard also because it's also very dry. And these grains, they absorb liquid. So we want to make sure you have plenty of liquid to cook them in, but also to wash them down. Mm -hmm. So that being said, carbohydrates are fermentable. So this is where we get wine and beer, which are delicious in moderation. However... The same thing can happen in your gut with your carbohydrates. And depending on the kind of bacteria you have and depending on the type of fiber you eat, you may or may not tolerate 
that kind of carbohydrate. Mm. So there are people out there, and we call these the FODMAPs. I'm not going to tell you what they are because that piece is not important. If you're curious, I can write it down for you and send it to you. FODMAPs are all digested a little bit differently in your system. And if you are not digesting it properly, it may give you severe bloating and gas. Mm. This is a problem with digesting certain carbohydrates. That's why some people struggle with beans. Gotcha. That's why some people struggle with broccoli and cauliflower. So gotcha. it may need more. It's going to need. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll boil some more water. Okay. So I, that we don't put in. Okay. Um, our soup's just going to take a little while longer. And our chias are, you can start to see there, they've got some more, uh, they're moving a little more slowly. So I also want to try, um, I've never tried pureeing chia seeds. And so I want to try blending a little bit to see what that does to the texture because I'm curious. And if it makes them a little bit smoother and softer, mm -hmm. might be worth a shot. Um, okay, so actually I do want to come back to this um, fiber. So a lot of people that take fiber, they swear by it. Um, fiber in your diet can, cr and something like this, like adding a supplement into your diet can potentially correct diarrhea or constipation with one thing. So it really depends. I have people that take this because they have constipation. I have people that take this because they have diarrhea. It corrects it towards the middle of that, both of them. So it absorbs water. So what this does is it pulls more water into your gut if you need more water in your gut. The other thing it does is if you have too much water in your gut and that's causing diarrhea, it absorbs that water and prevents the diarrhea. So if you need a fiber supplement, there's nothing wrong with that. I, people laugh at me because they'll come into my house and see it on my counter and they're like, you take a fiber supplement. I'm like, yeah, when I need it, I take one. I listen to my body and what it tells me. They make fun of me and I don't care because I feel better. And let me tell you, feeling better is what this is all about, right? We're, Stephanie and I are doing this because we want you to feel better. And for a lot of people, it's just that their nutrients are a little bit off and we need to correct some of those so that your body can start to heal on its own. Um, and maybe it's that you have esophageal dysmotility and we need to figure out how to get the fiber into you safely so that you don't have all this discomfort and reflux and things like that. So we address each person individually because all of us are different and you never know what someone's going through. So we're always happy to help. That definitely didn't need that potato, so I'm glad I didn't cut it up. No, there's, there's plenty. And, lots of solids. And there. these mixed vegetables had some potatoes in it too. So, and I'm glad didn't Two add all of them. Lot. Yeah. Probably could have used less of the navy beans too. Oh yeah. But. So, so beans are, uh, one can is three and a half servings. So half a cup is a serving and half a cup of beans has six grams of fiber and seven grams of protein. That's why I love beans because they're so nutrient dense also. Um, I, and I've said this before, if you have trouble digesting beans, if you cook beans and cook them with a bay leaf or I use kombu seaweed, um, which I've, we've talked about before, it helps break down some of those starches that are hard for your body to digest and then you don't have as much trouble with the gas and the bloating. You can also get gas X if that's the case, which I believe is a liquid and you can just add it. Okay, so while these chia seeds are almost there, I'm going to pour some of them into my handy dandy blend jet and I'm gonna puree a little bit and see what happens and then we'll put it in one of our beautiful little cups here. Okay. So just going to grab a serving spoon of some kind, which I think is back here. Okay. 
How's that looking? I'm going to steal a pasta. Do that. Let me know. It's almost there. Okay. The flavor is fantastic. Yeah? I don't think we needed tomatoes. So this is the other thing about minestrone. If you have ingredients that you need to know what to do with, you can make minestrone. If you have tomatoes, you can use them, but you don't need to. And tomatoes are one of those things that can potentially cause GERD or reflux because they're high in acidity. And if you already have that acid, maybe tomatoes are a trigger for you. If they're not, great. But for a lot of people, tomatoes are something that contributes to reflux. So we recommend you stay away from those. So this soup, you can or you can't. It's totally up to you. It's one of the reasons I love it. I just want to cover the blades a little bit. Okay. Did you taste it? I did not taste it yet. You're nervous, aren't I you? I am. I love it. Okay. It's not quite ready yet because it's still pretty liquidy. But it's... exactly what you were worried about huh but how does it go down because yes if you crunch them they're gonna be crunchy but, but if you don't they kind of slide right down so I know a lot of, of our clients that don't chew right flip that that don't eat solids mm -hmm. and have trouble with crumbly things mm -hmm. aren't they aren't chewing because they're either drinking or they're eating right egg, so mm -hmm. they're not chewing anyway mm -hmm. so they they do make drinks like juice drinks that have chia seeds in them that are meant to be drunk have you seen them um, have any of you seen them where? I'm curious you mean like in the grocery store mm -hmm. you'll see them at some point the next time like you're by there. the kombucha and all that mm-hmm mm -hmm. yep Kombucha, all the like fancy little protein. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is actually good. And I, I was, Yay! I was not, I was not looking forward to this. <laughs> She's been skeptical since we talked about doing this, because the flavor's good. The flavor's delicious. And actually. if we add fruit, it's gonna taste like whatever fruit we add. I'm kind of into chewing a little. So I really love chia seeds like I like that they have multiple textures but I also like that if I don't, don't want to chew them I don't have to chew them mm -hmm. I can just and they go so, right down so I'm I'm channeling my inner dysphagia and I think it would just slide down I don't think that you would feel it like you do other texture things that size mm -hmm. but it's not me I'd love for someone to try it and let yeah. me know and if you want to try it live with us Mm -hmm. Maybe we should see if anyone wants to try this like on a, a Google Meet call where we can all turn on our videos and we can do it together because that might be fun. So if anyone is interested, um, I'll, that's a good idea. I'll maybe make a short video and see if anyone wants to sign up to do this. All right, I'm going to step, step away real quick to puree this. It might not. making it thicken faster it got super thick super fast I needed the longer spoon and so this was just blending it once there's still Quite a bit of seeds so there is doesn't but it's the texture is more pudding like now so like it better like that yeah because mm -hmm. I think this is gonna be too textured for some people yeah it actually gives it more texture mm -hmm. because you've broken that we've we've slime cut. barrier <laughs> Hey, your opinion of this is what's important. So I would eat this like this. 
Um, I would maybe even add my fruit into it when I puree it. Uh -huh. Um, and I think I, I could have probably pureed it a couple more times. However, I would have had to add more liquid. Yep. Because this is almost too thick. Or this will it was, get... It was having trouble. Mm-hmm. Because it was thicker. So, I am glad we tried this experiment. Because I've never tried this before. Because I usually just eat them whole like this. I would eat, I would eat this. And it's really good for you. And I want mine with peaches. <clears throat> yeah, so if you have dysphagia, don't do this. Because I just had a little piece get in and now I want to cough. So don't puree your chia seeds if you have dysphagia. Eat them I'm whole. I'm glad we did this. I'm glad we did this too. Because if, if one gets stuck for me, it's going to get stuck for everyone else. Yeah? This was like a... you can feel it, the individual, mm -hmm. but it doesn't catch like the typical. Like this one does. Yeah, like mm -hmm. typical grainy things do. Like I never recommend things like crackers or right because it catches. Yep. And that's what that does it's doing because now. you've you've sharpened the edge of that seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the other thing I was going to talk about is I have this baby food because we did a smoothie. We made a vanilla smoothie with um some baby food to do like a fruit a fruit funfetti uh, breakfast shake one day. So we added like a little thing of baby food. This one is banana plum grape. I wanna say we added a strawberry. <clears throat> I need some water. One second. It really is stuck in my throat. So don't do that. No, please don't do that. Don't blend your chia seeds. So we blended the baby food. One of the things you can do if you want to try it is you can add a, a tablespoon of chia seeds to your baby food let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes so it can thicken you can always add a little more of your milk of choice non-dairy milk oat milk regular milk it's totally up to you and then you can have that as a snack and it's still gonna thicken the same way because it's gonna absorb some of the liquid from in here and it's gonna increase the nutrients in the baby food now, this is a transitional phase. So if you are eating baby food, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But remember, babies don't eat baby food for very long. They transition from milk to solids within the period of, what, six months, months. to a year? Mm -hmm. So remember, if you're eating baby food, you need to come talk to us because this is transitional and this will keep you alive but it's not gonna totally improve your quality of life. So we are advocates for using it when mm -hmm. you need it, but like I said, transitional. We wanna get you to that next step from here, so. And some people don't transition from this texture because mm -hmm. of esophageal issues. Correct. I'm not suggesting that everyone is like that. Mm -hmm. But there are ways that we can teach you Yep how to make your own so that it is more nutrient dense. Yep. Like the chia seeds. Like chia seeds. Are we ready to blend some soup? It's it's time, yes. Um, it's not as liquidy. Uh, there's just too much stuff. There's too much stuff. Okay, so here's the thing. If your soup has too much stuff, get some extra liquid and we'll add it as mm -hmm. we need it. Mm -hmm. um, and this may be where you just use water. You may use chicken stock. You may use vegetable stock. Totally up to you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to be a little more selective with the amount of pasta I put in here because yeah. remember, even though it's lentil pasta, it's still going to thicken a little bit. has a little bit of a stop screen. Yep, that's perfect, okay. Okay, so we haven't done this in a while. So we're gonna go over the safety rules of blending hot soup. 
because I have seen a couple of people on some of the support groups talk about how you should never blend hot soup. If you have a Vitamix or you have a, a blender lid that has a hole in it, you can because it releases the pressure. This does not have a hole in it. So technically, if we were to use your Ninja food processor, mm -hmm. I think it would puree this Just pretty, pretty mm -hmm. darn smooth. So I'm going to put the lid on here, but I'm not going to put it on all the way. I also have been doing this for many, many years. So if you're not comfortable doing this, no. let your soup cool down first. So the other thing, I'm gonna move this back because if it comes out, we don't wanna get soup in our chia seed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have it open just a little bit. It may splatter me, do not be alarmed. Oh, I don't have it on there all the way. Okay, or I had it too far on there. I do that sometimes. I do, I do. Okay. It a little bit. Okay. Okay. Do that one. Great. We have some teacups for our soup because we are believers that your food should be served in something beautiful. We love our teacups. Okay, yes, we do. So, I don't even know where that came doing? from. Oh, it was over the top. I was trying to see if it looked pretty smooth or not. I'm going to pour it in here. Um, there's still a couple of chunks in there. So I would say this probably needs to go another time. So I'm going to pour it back in here. What? Do you, do you have do a it? thought? No, okay. I'm, I'm not thinking. Okay. I'm not thinking. I don't think. Sure you I do. do. Says the speech therapist who's a cognitive specialist. She's thinking. Just don't put it all the way. Don't put it all the way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Or you're just prepared with a towel. I think that we need to talk to Blinjet about putting a little... I agree. Spout. Let's do it. I agree. And release spout. Mm -hmm. Although they say you're not supposed to use anything over like 120 degrees. I know. But we're, we're careful. I promise Blinjet we're careful. Okay. That's, that's better. Okay, so that was twice. Oh, very smooth. That looks great. All right. Oh, that's tasty. It's good. Mm. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you add salt? I didn't. It can use a little bit of salt. But you know, it's always good to salt after you blend because you lose... And we used salted, yes. And these aren't terribly high. There's only 290. And the beans are not terribly high, but together they might add. Mm -hmm. So let me try it like this. Mm -hmm. So when you blend, you lose. You, you don't need it there. Flavor. Right so in that pot, you're fine. This one, just a little bit. All right. Better? Yep. Just try it. And that was just a pinch of salt. Not even. That, not even like. Yeah. It was just. And, and we're using kosher salt, so you have more control over how much goes in it mm -hmm. because you can feel the granules. So, okay. Just right. All right. So we have a beautiful soup. And then we're also, oh yeah, so now we're, we're pretty well thickened here. I'm going to move this because it's sort of in my, okay. Okay. So if you want to try the chia pudding, but you're scared, let's get on a Zoom or a Google Meet. We like to use Google Meet. Um, and let's 
gorgeous absolutely beautiful so we have a beautiful chia pudding you can put some fruit puree on top mm -hmm. And then we have our lovely little minestrone soup in our teacup. So if you need the recipe, I Googled min minestrone soup. I think the recipe I used was uh, love and lemons. And I, we substituted lentil pasta at the last minute, which actually increases the amount of fiber from that recipe. So that recipe was 10 grams per serving. This one's going to be probably closer to 12, which is like half your daily value as a woman. So be careful when you have this soup. If you're not used to much. If fiber. you're not used to it, maybe you cut the serving in half. Mm -hmm. And then it also freezes well. This is going to freeze super well, yeah. reheat super well. And this will keep you going and it's nutrient dense. So the puppies are saying it's time. <laughs> All right, everybody. I think I talked more about fiber than I expected to. Talk a lot about fiber in my that's time. Why, that's why you didn't need a script. <laughs> I really like fiber. It's, it's my friend. It's your friend too. You just don't know it yet. Or maybe you do. And if so, cheers. Um, if you have any questions, Please send them to us. You can post at the bottom of this video or you can send us an email, dysphagiaduo at gmail.com. Our website is currently under construction, but it's coming along beautifully. It is. So you can always go to our website and book a call with us. If you're not sure um, or if that for some reason is not working, just send us a message on here and let us know you want to book a call and we'll send you a link to get that set up. Yep. So we're happy to talk with you and maybe you just want to tell us your story and that's okay too. So have a great evening, enjoy your fiber, and mm -hmm. we'll see you next week, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right. because we have a, a scheduling thing. But we'll be back 6.30 next week. It is the week before St. Patrick's Day. Oh, that's right. Yep, my favorite holiday. I, I don't know if you can see my, my four leaf clovers here, but yep. It's my favorite. Great. So we are going to be making a traditional St. Patrick's Day meal, both pureed and uh, minced and moist. And we're going to walk you through it. So please join us 6.30 p.m. Eastern time next Wednesday, Wednesday corned beef and cabbage, uh, carrots, potatoes. I don't know what we're going to do for dessert yet. Something so, green, probably. Something green, yeah. Yeah. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And as always, we want to be a part of your dysphagia journey. So invite us along. We'll see you next week. Bye.